Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite theorems. As usually very biased because well, what are my favorite theorems, right? Um, today, uh, an all-star and very nice, not super applicable, but still very nice and a little bit surprising theorem from linear algebra, the so-called Gashkorn circle theorem, um, dating back to the 1930s. Um, to a uh, Russian mathematician with, whose name is Geshkuri, or was Geshkuri. Um, as, as usual with Russian mathematicians, there's no, uh, well, this is probably the most common spelling of his name, but you might see the different spelling. Anyway, um, that's just how it is. So let's, let me try to explain what this is all about. And it's all about drawing circles. Um, this was a really bad circle, but you will see a lot of much nicer circles. And it's basically, you want a circle eigenvalues. So kind of the question you would like to ask is, well, calculating eigenvalues, mm, I don't really know. That's hard in general. So can you may maybe read off the eigenvalues from the matrix itself? Or in what way can you read off the eigenvalues? Of course, you can't. Because otherwise, it would be a standard part of linear algebra, but you can do something. And that's basically uh, what is this theorem is all about. So let's start with an example. So, uh, three examples actually. I will always have some fixed matrix. Um, and I will never touch the diagonal. So, the diagonal will always be whatever it is. And very easy. So, I have uh, a purple one. A purple diagonal entry, which corresponds to this circle, and it's exactly centered at the center of the circle. So the I, so, so this is C, complex plane. And I is, of course, um, just in real coordinates, just 0, 1. So it's, it's, it's above here. And for example, minus I, the blue one is down here, is minus I, or the center of the circle is minus I, of course. Then you have um, 0 0.1 here which is the green entry and you have a red entry, which is minus one. Very simple setup. And in this example, so the three the examples will be basically differ by, by how much bigger the diagonal entries are than the rest. So in this example, the kind of the diagonal entries are really huge compared to the rest because the rest is something like 0 0.25 or 0.1 or whatever, something like that. Zero is certainly very small. And with small, I mean absolute value. So for, for example, this one um, is also relatively small. OK, and good. So that's a matrix. And then you draw, then you realize, mm, um, OK, my eigenvalues. So those are the eigenvalues. And each one kind of corresponds to a circle. So here you go. There's a a purple one, a red one, there's a green eigenvalue, and there's a blue eigenvalue. And these are just approximations, but you can basically see, well, the purple one, it's up here. So it's really the, the, the black dot. It's basically right in the center of the circle. And same for all others. And you can see it from the coordinates. So let me just, so this is here, and this is, of course, here. And you can see it from, from the coordinates, right? This is zero points. So this is the, the, the blue one. Maybe I should make it blue. So the blue one is something like 0 0.004 in the x coordinate. And so the x. And in y, it's basic, it's minus 1.007. So it's basically right in the center of the circle, which is a little bit surprising because this is certainly not a diagonal matrix or anything. But still, the eigenvalues are not very far away from the, from, from the, uh, from the diagonal. OK? So maybe we can actually do something with eigenvalues um, for those matrices. Then you start, start looking at the next example, kind of the same matrix. I haven't changed much. But now, roughly, the diagonal entries are roughly of the same size as the rest. For instance, I have 0. Point uh, 1.1 1 .1 here, and I have 1.1 1 .1 here, something like that. 
and you play the same game, you don't move the circles because you haven't moved the diagonal, so diagonal stays the same, circle stays the same. And now your eigenvalues are a little bit off, but not too bad. So this one moves a little bit to the side. The green one moves a little bit to the, well, whatever it is, uh, southeast. Uh, the red one moves a little bit to the northwest. And the blue one moves a little bit to the southwest. But they are still pretty much in the center of the circle, not very, very far away which is now even more confusing or surprising because you're pretty far away from a diagonal matrix here, but still the eigenvalues are basically the entries on the diagonal, which is very surprising, right? If, if you, usually you spend ages of computing eigenvalues, this is, those two examples kind of want to say, why not just look at the diagonal? It's, it's not as easy as that, obviously, but, um, the Gashkin circle theorem tells you that it's not so bad in some sense. Um, it, it gets bad at one point. So, um, okay, here's an example. So, so as long as you're in, in those two cases, so diagonal is very big, diagonal is a reasonable size compared to the rest, then you are fine. If diagonal is much smaller than the rest, so here I have whatever, much smaller, whatever that means. You have 1.8, for example then things move uh, quite quite far away from, from their original circles. Um, okay, as you can see here. But, so, probably that was what, what Geshkarin was thinking about, like, how can I now determine the, well, in a lot of cases, um, the eigenvalues are just right next to the, to, to, to the if, if you plot the points along the diagonal and make a little radius around to make a little circle, um, then the, the eigenvalues are basically always in those circles. And the only question you kind of need to answer is, that's what it seems at least, is how can you control in what sense they are next to the eigenvalue? So basically you want to vary what I haven't done here so I had always had circles of the same radius. So we basically want to vary the radius depending on the corresponding row. Right? Because it, it seems like the other entries in this row or column, so the other entries in this matrix, kind of push entries further away from, from the origin. And that's exactly what the Gresh Green Circle Theorem says. You can estimate where the eigenvalues are by just knowing the diagonal and the other entries uh, in the same row or column. So strictly speaking, it works as this. So we have a matrix and the only restriction is that I want my entries from, from, from C and it's, it's, a, it's a nice whatever square matrix. And you can form those Gershkorn circles, either for rows or for columns. Same, same procedures. The circles might dip, might dip a bit different, but the statement is the same. So let's just focus on the row circles, the, the green ones. So for each row of your matrix, you have a circle, Ri, and its center is exactly the di corresponding diagonal entry, right? So that's, that's what I did here. So the center of, of whatever, the red circle, this is R2. The center of the red circle is the corresponding eigenvalue, okay? And now you just have to decide um, how big the radius, so how big the circle in, in the end should be. And the upper bound, you, obviously, if you make the circle arbitrary large, then at one point all your um, uh, eigenvalues will be in that circle. That, that's, that's not a really interesting statement. The, the point he makes, uh, Gashrin makes, is you only need to take the radius of the size of the other entries. So you just sum over all the other entries and take absolute value and that's the radius. Um, and I should have done this for, for the other row because that's what I did here. So you sum over all other entries, ignoring the, the one you're looking at, that, that's just the center, all the others, take absolute value and that's the radius. Okay. So the only thing you need to know is the diagonal entry that's 
So this was this one, the diagonal entry, that's the center of the circle and the sum of, of the absolute values of, of the rest of the row. And this gives you the, the corresponding gash green circle or the row circle. And the statement is then, then the eigenvalues are not very far off from those circles. So they will always lie in those row circles. That's kind of the point. That's what we have seen here. So the, the, in order to fix this, I would have, would have had to make this thing a little bit bigger, like whatever, like, like this radius, and I would be happy, um, for example. And Gash Green basically gives an upper bound how far you need to go in order to be absolutely sure that your eigenvalue will lie in the eigenvalues will lie in the corresponding circles. And you can also see that his bound is optimal in the sense that if you have a matrix like this, so with, with only zeros on the diagonal, so everything will be centered around the origin, but it's it's this this matrix with um, which is which is like a Z mod four matrix, right? It kind of mimics the action of Z mod four. So this shifts one down, this shifts one down, this shifts one down, this shifts one down, but comes up again because five is uh, whatever four is uh, zero mod four. And you can see that the eigenvalues of this matrix are exactly the roots of unities. So they lie on the, on the unit circle around the origin and the worst thing you need to do is because in, in each row you only have entry one is to your signal circle. That's that's what, what he says. And this is the optimal kind of the optimal bound that works for any matrix. Okay, say it again. And then I give you a very nice example. Um, so in order to estimate what what the uh, eigenvalues are without computing them, you only need to draw circles around the diagonal entries. And the radius of the circles is determined by the other entries in the corresponding row or column. You can decide row or column, whatever, whatever works better. And that's it. You don't need to calculate anything. It's you can di basically di uh, directly read it off from the matrix, which is pretty cool theory. So let me show it to you how it works. And actually, it's a very smooth behavior. Um, so I have this matrix here. And the only point about this matrix is that it has three entries, three diagonal entries. One, that's a point here. Eight, that's a point here. And this nine plus 10i, that's a point here. And I have a parameter that I call alpha. And alpha is basically, um, you have all those off diagonal entries. You don't have to look too closely at them. It doesn't matter, but they are all something like, uh, an actual number times alpha. So for instance, three times alpha is the entry up here. And I want to I want to show you that eigenvalues and gash green circles actually behave in the smooth way. Now I want to vary alpha. So from alpha equals zero, um, this will be a diagonal matrix because everything on the off diagonal is scaled by alpha. And you can see it, the gash green circles are, well, of radius zero and lie exactly on the eigenvalues. And then you can go on. Uh, alpha equals 0 0.25. The gash green circles have now the corresponding radius. And the, the, the lambda moves a little bit away from the center. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, the circles get bigger. The lambda moves a little bit away. Uh, 0. 7, 5, the circle has to get bigger, the lambda move a little bit away. So here's the center of the circle and here's the lambda, okay? So maybe I should give the lambda a different color. Here's the lambda and it moves a little bit away. So let me show you an animation, which is, which is easier to see. But basically those four pictures animated. Okay, so here's my animation. It's ex exactly the same picture. You have the corresponding, um, uh, so, so for alpha equals zero, you have a diagonal matrix. So the center of the gash green circles are exactly the eigenvalues. So the eigenvalues will be my black points. And you will see the circles in the second as I vary alpha. So alpha equals zero. And now let's vary alpha. Uh -huh. Okay, let's play it again. So alpha goes from zero to one. And you can see that the eigenvalues move smoothly away from the center, but they always keep on lying in the circle. So the circle gets bigger and the eigenvalues 
move away a little bit. And that's what the gas screen, the, the kind of the smooth properties behind the gas screen circle theorem. Uh, I could watch this for ages, it's, it's really nice. So the eigenvalues move a little bit away, the circles get big in a very smooth, absolutely smooth uh, process. Okay, but anyway, um, that's what I wanted to talk, uh, tell you today. So the Gashwin circle theorem is kind of a, uh, a method to estimate uh, where the eigenvalues basically are of a matrix without calculating them by drawing circles around uh, the diagonal entries, which I think is a pretty nice idea. Okay, hope to see you next time.